everyone um thank you so much for all the wonderful comments from last week it was like a massive fat deliciously comfortable cashmere blanket um it's um even when things are bad if we're sort of in it together as we know from covid it does make it slightly better doesn't it anyway on for today's makeup distraction just a little bit of um uh, beauty, just a bit of a beauty diversion. Um, and as you look at me now, well, you might notice that I've had my hair coloured. I think it's gone a bit yellow, which is a bit annoying. Any tips for that? I think my lovely hairdresser may have whipped it off just a little bit too quick. I was like, I want to be blonder. I need more light in my life. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely gone blonder, but maybe just a little bit too custardy over buttery. That's the thing, isn't it? It's such a delicate thing, but oh God, it's exhausting making yourself look presentable, isn't it? Secondly to that, you might notice that I have a rather large friend on my forehead. I walked into, or literally headbutted the, my friend's car door. Great. Um, so I was thinking, great, well, I can't do the film and I can only film today. It's Monday in London here. We're blessed with a really sunny day. Um, so I just thought I'd get on with it. I was like, oh, I'll just show you how to cover it. But I actually thought it would be really purpley green. I guess that's to come uh, later on. But um, yes, I, I will go into that later. What arrived over the weekend is a new SPF from um, La Roche-Posay. Um, I have talked endlessly about La Roche-Posay. Um, their spray SPF and their very light ones and their matte ones are just amazing. And I just kind of quite like the little diddy pot because you can just put it in your handbag. So this is their brand new one. And basically this is it's SPF 50. I'm gonna put it on. I'm sure it's very lightweight. I haven't even opened it up yet. Um, but the point of this new product is that it's really concentrated on the long UVA rays, which cause the most damage and the most pigmentation. Um, it's got, I think it's like it's four, 25 paintings pending for Mexeril, um, a 400 filter. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> All I know is it's going to stop me from getting pigmentation because it's got a better filter to protect our skin from the long UVA rays. If you would like to have more information about that or have someone from La Roche-Posay um, talking about SPF, then um, I'll get them on. So as you can see, really light and milky. I put some eyebrows on earlier. Let's just see. Very thin, doesn't spread too much. I wouldn't say it's like super hydrating. Not that I need that for my SPF. Very milky, I have to lay that on the floor actually. Lay that on the table and then place that really over the front of my face and of course, Especially if you're a driver, this side of our faces, right? It's always, well, in England anyway, this side of our faces really catch the sun from the side of the window. Okay, so let's just put a lot more on. So that's taking a little bit to spread. I'm going to do it in the palms of my hands and press it in. That's better. Oh, ouch! Um, I can only film today because I'm working the rest of the week. So um, there was no choice in that. So I hope you don't mind. But, you know, life... Gives us bumps and bruises sometimes, doesn't it? It's a long time since I've whacked my head. Um, it'd be interesting when the swelling comes down, I'll probably have sort of one very swollen eye. Okay, so that is a really pleasant texture. It is not greasy at all. It doesn't feel occlusive, doesn't feel oily. It definitely feels like I've got a layer over my skin, which I think is always good with SPF. I do love the ultraviolet um, screen queen. I've been really loving that because that just feels like a serum. This feels slightly more protected. When I touch my skin, I feel like I've got a layer on it, but I don't feel heavy at all with it. So any more SPF information, I can definitely get people on to talk about that, but very interesting. And the price is 18 pounds for 50 mil. So super affordable. And if pigmentation is your worry or your thing, which I think probably for most of us it is, isn't it? That sun damage, then check that out. Okay, so I've got a little meeting later. So I wanted to do, uh, um, I have a feeling we're not because I'm just wearing this grey jumper. Oh, that's what I wanted to say to you. I'm just going to start with my CC at Cosmetics um, on a bit of coverage. One of the comments from last week was really fascinating and I sort of don't even pick these things up. And the lovely lady said, you've really taught me that I need to get dressed before I put my makeup on. And I thought, God, how interesting. I didn't even realise that. Yeah, well, of course. 
I've never ever, unless I know what I'm wearing and I've wore it before and stuff and sort of get ready in my dressing gown, or you're just doing that sort of like day to day. So the never ever is a load of rubbish, so just ignore what I said. Um, I've always thought about my makeup with um, my clothes, but I think that's just because I've been trained that way because at work, um, we will come in to a studio or to a shoot or red carpet or whatever and it will always be like, right, what's the person wearing? What are we shooting? Are we doing really nice kind of winter knits for Glamour magazine or, you know, are we doing a red carpet wearing Chanel and what's the look and what, you know, it always comes from what we wear. So yes, I will think, right, I'm wearing quite a plain top because that's what I feel happy in. For me, I like the bright, accent of colour on my nails and I'm going for a kind of a nice happy sort of ready pink but in a liquid matte because I'm in a meeting I don't want to be um, aware of um, what my lipstick's doing or thinking about it. Right so I've put this on I just love this base because it just literally does the job so quickly and I just whack it on like that. I'm not as you know a, a spongy brush person because um, I just think it's just such a waste um, of product it's unnecessary. So I'm going to go in with my e.l.f. Camo Concealer. Now this is the matte finish. This shade is medium sand. When you're covering anything on your skin that is raised, it's tricky because you're always going to get a little bit of a shadow. It's quite sunny here so you can't see. Maybe I'm sure you can see just the swollen part. When I had really bad acne, I could never really cover it. People would always see it because it was bumpy. It's just like you've got a little bit of a swelling under your eye, um, a little bit of an eye bag. You'll always see it. Um, you, can't, you can't get rid of it because there's a swelling there. But if you've got pigmentation or, or redness, you can um, because you're just creating a flatness. So the reason I'm sort of saying that sort of quite slowly just to help you understand is that when you do cover something that is slightly raised, that's where you have to make sure that it's matte. Anything that is shiny, just going to go around that side just very lightly, anything that is shiny is going to really enhance that change of texture and that sort of elevation from the skin. So the um, e.l.f. concealer, which is just so great, I'm going to place all around there, is so, so matte. I might not even need a little bit of powder on it, but I will... <sighs> Actually, it doesn't look that bad. I'm not going to get that much sympathy at home. I'll tell you because you can't really see much. Um, I'm going to place a little bit of powder over the top of this just so that it lasts a little bit longer. Sometimes I find by using a powder, it becomes like a sort of hairspray to my makeup. It just gives me that little bit of um, extra longevity. I'm not a fan particularly of setting sprays. I do like a couple, Urban Decay one, if I'm working with someone who has um, a face or complexion that sort of eats makeup. And what I mean by that is you put the makeup on and it just sort of slightly dissolves. I really don't know why. I'm just going to go in with the um, By Terry. This is 100 Fair um, Hyaluronic Powder. Um, I do have the uh, pressed ones, um, but they're in my kit. So I've just got this one at home. It's a loose one, it's slightly more fiddly, but you know, I love this with the um, hyaluronic in. So what I'm going to do is going to really push, and you can probably see a real change in texture to the rest of my face. I'm fine with that. So if you're covering up any um, spots or pigmentation, that's okay. Really pack it on, first of all, or use a nice puff just to really push it in. I can't push it in because it's too painful. And then take um, a light brush and just whisk over the top. But the application initially of popping that on really makes the difference. And you need to feather the texture of the area that you're covering, if you're covering here or you're covering exactly where I am, you don't want it to look, because the texture is so different because you've got makeup there and not there, you need to make sure you've got a nice feathered edge. So a nice clean brush and just going around that edge makes a huge difference. So that means you get longevity where it is and this is, um, Something that I did when I learned to cover up my acne as best I could, I'd pack it on where I needed to and then I would feather it off, but making sure that the powders and the concealers that I used were matte, not reflective ones. And I've seen, I've seen it hundreds of times, people using products like Touche Clay 
um, by YSL and putting it on, especially guys, and I'm sort of talking about, you know, maybe like musicians and stuff, just thinking it's concealer and not knowing, but you know, girls too, just thinking I'm putting concealer on it, but actually because it's reflective, it does um, make it more obvious and it brings the attention to and you want to bash it right down. Um, good, now where's my little concealer? I'm really loving the Monica blunder, I have to say, this is my 2.5 concealer just for under my eyes, because I am quite dark under my eyes. This colour would have been too light um, to put on my forehead. I needed to get the colour that really matched my skin tone. And you can see how much lighter that is um, because it really helps to lift that area of my face. And it just stays put. I think if you're very dry around this area, you're not going to like it. I think I kind of manipulate this product quite well. And I think because it's sort of a makeup artist product, um, I think Monica has probably been able to produce something that she can use for really high coverage. And then because she's confident of using brushes and tools and maybe adapting skincare a bit more, that she can really sort of thin it out. But you know, the average consumer probably doesn't really want to do that or have has the confidence to do that. Cause I have noticed that, you know, people, when they put their makeup on and I must do this and I will get back to um, just having a few girls in and watching how they do their makeup. So this is a really great learning for all of us. When you watch people do their makeup and then I can just go, actually, if you do it like this, you do it like that, look at the difference. And then you see the difference, especially when you do a half face, you're like, ah, oh, eureka moment. Um, I did do my brows and I haven't used this in ages with my Urban Decay brow blade, just to make them a little bit softer. I thought that I'd be banging on too much. And I thought I'd whack this on, but I'd forgotten how nice this was. Um, it's ink on one side and then a really kind of like thin coal the other side um, and the shade that I use is taupe trap which I think works with my colouring it doesn't look too red um, now oh I've got a good dupe for you you know that I love my Christian Dior um, five, eight, <laughs> six, five, eight. Um, eyeshadow and these are the mono um, couture colors um, this is my fave I just whack it on with my finger really love to use that um, but Matt's Thatcher have got a really nice palette eyeshadow palette um, and this one is hazy sands um, and you can see they've kind of got the warmer color and the cooler color and this just works perfectly so you can see the way that I've been using it and it looks exactly like I've put my finger in it, that's literally because I have. Um, and they've got a few different colourways, which I should have actually got out to show you. But I'm really loving putting eyeshadow on with my finger. Just if I'm in a, in a, in a rush and I want to kind of create something that's just going to give a little bit of a hue over my eye. Like if, if I had really, for this look, if I had sort of opened out eyes, really nice deep sockets that didn't go like that, <laughs> I would... Um, probably just put a little bit of balm over or something just slightly softer because I'm going to go for a stronger lip just because it's the daytime and it's lovely to, to wear a nice colour but I think the colour looks much fresher uh, with a juxtaposition of a, a more or a less made up complexion um, but because I just need to kind of push my eyes back for my confidence then I'm going to pop some of this on so just with my middle finger I'm going to place that on and this is so soft i'm using quite a firm pressure popping it on and this is going to give you that very soft hue and i've noticed that lots of you seem to like that really soft finish to makeup which i do too i like a bit of pop from maybe like you no know, thick mascara or bright color or blush or something this actually works quite lovely with my top and you can see how the product is moving around um, it's really creamy um, but it, it's sort of, I mean, who sort of creamy balmy, um, but it's solid enough that it just doesn't um, go too greasy on your lid. And for me, just to kind of differenti differentiate the, the colour on my eyelids to my complexion um, gives my um, eyes a little bit of shape, but doesn't overpower them. 
again keeping that balance with the lip and I might do my lip and then do the blush first because I'm not sure which blush is going to work first so that's just using the one colour we've got more of a sparkly one but I don't want to use that or a black but this for me now is just perfect now I'll just make sure that's just blended in so that's super soft and again I'm not going to go in with a truckload of mascara like I would normally do I'm going to go back to my Honest Beauty, which I'm sorry that I'm talking to you and looking down. Um, I was trying to find it. Uh, this is just something that I have not ever got bored of. This and the Glossier one, but the Glossier, um, is it called Stretch Concealer? No, sorry, Mascara. Slick, I think it's called. It is the Stretch Concealer. It's the Slick Mascara. Yes, no, Caroline, I can hear you talking back to me. <laughs> um, so I've just, just never got bored of this. Please tell me if you've bought it and you've loved it. So pop on the primer. Um, and let that dry. I'm really sort of, um, oh yes, I was gonna curl my eyelashes. Found these really nice um, Tweezerman eyelash curlers. And then one for really sort of long straight lids and then one for more sort of almond eyes like me. And I thought, oh, never really tried that because I've always used the Kevin Aquan one and the Shamira one and they've always worked on my eyes. I've never really thought about it. And if I've worked on straighter eyes, I've done it at different angles. I've done half a lash and half a lash. So I've kind of worked with the eye shape. Um, and I literally could not put the other ones on. Ugh, made my eyes go a bit weird because you think you're going to pinch your skin. Um, and the other ones, we'll do that next week. I'll make a little note if you're interested in eyelash curling. Um, I'm fortunate because I've got long lashes and with a decent amount of mascara I can get that lift. The key with um, curling your lashes is just if you've got short lashes and you can't ever see the tips um, of the lashes and that makes all the difference. Seeing the tips of your lashes of any eye makeup that you've done is the key to going right I've nailed it. Because if you see the tips of your lashes you're not closing your eyes. If you don't see the tips of your lashes it almost makes your eyes look a little bit bald. Um, so therefore you don't have that opened effect and that goes really and that is very important when you're doing a eyeliner if you're doing a thick kind of you know even if you're going Amy Winehouse style really thick and bold that's fine as long as you've either got a lash on or your own lashes are long enough that you can see um, the tips and if you graduate the lash on the outside that's fine because you can still see the tips but if you do an eyeliner I'm sure we've all You've all been there before where you've put it on and you've just gone too heavy because it's so easy, isn't it, just to go a little bit too thick and it just overpowers the eye. But it will never overpower the eye if you can still see the tips of your lashes. So you can always look straight down the mirror and go, right, have I got the tips of my lashes? Yep, smashed it. So anything that's slightly heavier on the eye, just really give your lashes a nice lift. But... um. For me, this mascara is kind of like my middle mascara, not my big fat one, but it gives lots of length, thickness and definition to my eyes, which throw them forward, in my, in my opinion. Um, but it's not too natural. Um, like the, If you like a natural lash, everyone's gone mad for the Max Factor Divine Mascara, Divine Lashes Mascara, whereas for me, it hasn't got enough oomph. <clears throat> But it's really, really good for me at work. I just want delicate, kind of pretty lashes where the mascara doesn't look overpowered. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, I've got lots of favourites of my liquid lipsticks. I like the Chanel Rouge Allure um, 956. I love my Dragon Girl from um, NARS, which is the matte version. There's also another orangey one, which I wanted to find you, but I've put it in a handbag, you know? like sucked through the handbags where's that fun I wanted but that's more orangey so I prefer that when I'm a little bit more tanned naturally so I'm going to go in with the red matte from Trish McAvoy um, so I could do um, like a little sort of budget versus um, high end or sort of under 20 pounds you know whichever you want if you want some more tips for products or kind of more dupe things then I can do that um, but anyway this um, is, has made me happy because Start in the middle and then I use my finger just very gradually stretching it across my lips. Sorry for the sound effects. It's a thing that you can do wrong so easily 
with liquid lips is put too much on too quickly and this color slides everywhere and you get into a bit of a pickle and you're like oh no and it's too much lip it's too much lipstick and you go over your lip line and it ends up looking a bit messy just apply right in the center keep rubbing together and stretch the color to the outer corners don't build up in the outer corners And when this dries, it dries really smooth and I can still have movement in my mouth as in I can sort of rub my lips together. It doesn't create that layer over the top where you feel like, you know, the, the colour is stuck there but it ends up being a little bit dry and then you start losing the colour in the centre of your mouth here. Um, gosh, I'm not even sure if I'm going to need any more. So I'm just going to go very, let's just clean up my Cupid's bow, very gently there just to make sure that I keep that definition and that shape, let that dry a little bit. And then take a clean cotton bud. I think just to kind of have that sort of nice, modern, feminine edge to the makeup, it's just softening that lip line. Sometimes if you use a lip brush, and maybe you've had the lip brush a while and uh, the bristles are slightly separated, when you have a liquid lipstick, it ends up making it streak. Have you ever had that before? Where you put it on, you're like, oh no, it's not going on smoothly. That's why the pads of your fingers are great applicators. Now you can see that I'm slightly blurring the line with the cotton bud, which is making my lips look bigger. Once you've used every little edge of the cotton bud, don't keep going in with the, with the one that's got the pigment on. Just go in with the clean ones that's always nice and polished. And we're gonna go in with a bit of concealer in a minute. And just over the top of that lip. It does seem a bit fiddly. See, I can still move the color, color's not Moving, that's perfect. I'm going to do a little bit of a, a confidence pat just in the middle to finish off. It's always there, isn't it, that you lose the colour. And just making sure that's nice and round. So I get the fullness of my lips. <sighs> Without um, it going over my lip line, which for me doesn't work. Works for many. Now, so I will take, so I'll go back to my foundation. My, my shade is medium, by the way. And I use my Otis Battersby brush and just follow that line around. And just polish it up. And down the center there. Not too much, because obviously I've got quite fine lines. If you haven't, you can probably afford to do more. Now I've created this really nice stain. Eyes are soft but defined, so I've got that balance there. If I was slightly younger looking in my eyes, then I'd probably just have a lick of mascara and that would be it. But I just need a little bit of structure in terms of the balance. So I picked out a few blushes. I've got Passion Fruit by um, Laura Mercier, hmm, no. Or I've got, what did I get? I got three out, didn't I? Then this is um, peachy. Now I've gone way too summery. I, I wanted to go more caramelly. That peach though, let me try it. That's too pinky, too much for Clash, for this look, okay? I do love pink and red, I have to say, I do love it. Let's see how this comes out, because I want it just to be like a warmth to my skin, but I didn't want it to look like bronzer. Hmm. Um, get a brush and blend that out. Yeah. I'm gonna go for a cream. I'm going to go for a cream. Ah, oh, that's what I got out. Haha, -ha, I knew I got something else. Yes, 
I don't like the um, matteness of the powder with what I'm doing. So let me just try this on the other side. Oh no, hold on a minute. That's, I thought Beach Babe was, that's the wrong color. Bear with me. Right, <laughs> okay, I'm going back to what I know so well and that's the Max Factor Creamy Blush in Soft Copper. <gasps> let me tell you, they're bloody discontinuing it. I mean, obviously they could have made an improvement on the packaging, but um, yeah, it's a real shame this is going. So grab some from your local store if you can. Um, just this color is one of those shades that just goes with every, every look. And because I want to kind of keep it soft, radiant, and just sort of slightly subtle, this just works better. It's a bit too pink, and then you end up going a little bit dolly. So let me take that off my cheeks and then I'll just balance that out. Bear with me. God, I don't know what that was on my forehead. <laughs> I have no idea how long I've had that on my forehead for. Oh God, I've had to take all that concealer off of my pigmentation. I have to wet that on again. Um, sorry if I've been doing that film with all that on my forehead. I've been such a toddler. Ridiculous. Okay, um, let me put a little bit more base back on and uh, buff it up and then just do the matching cheek and then I will let you get on with your days um, and maybe you've got a, a cheery lip too. Nice sort of punchy one and hopefully you can wear that and unlike me you won't have a big lump on the front of your face. <laughs> so just blending that out slightly, blending that into the rest of my makeup and I'll go in with the blush. So many of your comments have said, oh yeah, I love it when I see you make mistakes, obviously, or just kind of, you know, you sort of grab a few things because in your mind's eye, you have an idea of what it will look like. And then when you put it on, it doesn't quite look like that. Um, I need to be a bit lighter just at the front of my face here. So I'm just gonna mix that in a little bit, just to kind of brighten that bit up there. So it doesn't look so flat. Now, if you've been doing your lipstick, with your fingers, just make sure that you don't uh, go over your cheeks with such a potent shade. Great, so with a bump on my head, I think I can walk into this meeting and not, um, not be too embarrassed. Obviously I'll bring it up straight away, but um, I'm sure they won't notice too much because this type of makeup is like the art of distraction. And I don't really want people to look at my forehead. So in my head, I was like, well, I'll just have a bright lip because then that will just kind of distract them. All these little subtle things that um, make a difference to us, but uh, probably everyone else doesn't really notice. But if you're going into a meeting and you want a strong color, that's a great way to apply a liquid lip. Um, so it will just stay put and it won't look dry, but it will just kind of add lovely, vibrant shape to your lips. Stay safe for everyone. Thank you for all your love and support. Thank you for being brilliant. It's great to have you in my life. Bye for now.